from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Library of Congress, which is supporting the festival, and he's in the ice cream summer, so I thought it's a great idea, and it was such a great feeling in spring, because I thought, um, well, everybody wants to hear about ice cream in the summer, and um, I will be in Washington and uh, talk about this book. And then all of a sudden I realize it's the last days of August and it's the first days of September and it's really sort of ridiculous to be traveling the, with the book called Ice Cream Summer. Um, I also never know with this book, I had some much more sophisticated books and then more sophisticated and adult audience would come to hear me so I could talk about situation in Tibet or uh, communist Europe and with this ice cream summer I found out this summer that it's mostly children who come and then if I show the book called ice cream summer they don't really care that much about the book but they are wondering where is the ice cream <laughs> so what I remember from like the days when I was trying to be a successful um, American um, children book illustrator that I thought what do I prepare for these kids that I'm like somehow appealing in my advanced age, so I found uh, straw head, which the grandpa has in the, in the book, and I made myself a little ice cream, <laughs> and I thought, that could work, but nobody's smiling, really. <laughs> and then I thought I, I should be drawing something. usually what the publishers tell you to do when you promoting children's books you should be drawing for kids but it's just sort of silly because if you draw the ice cream then you know the children will eat the ice cream so it sort of doesn't make sense and also it looks like it's very easy to draw and sometimes it's not so easy to draw because it takes weeks and months and years this book didn't take that much this book is the ultimate uh, love letter I was always thinking about how do I do book as an immigrant, which would be uh, somehow depicting my love for America. And I had a project on Benjamin Franklin. I had a project on which I did called Train of States about different uh, states depicted as the, as the caravans. And all of a sudden, when my children got so old that they left for the colleges and left me and my wife alone at home, I thought, oh, I remember those summers when we used to go out and buy the ice cream and sit in the sunset and all having an ice cream cone. So this book is really about um, those summers and, and, and being together with them. And, and so I didn't want to really read from the book because the book really is about mischief of a little boy who tells his grandfather that he's studying over the summer that he's counting and then he's drawing and then he's reading, but in fact everything he's doing is to do with ice cream. It's an obsessive book. <laughs> also, it's a good idea that you would go and get the books for yourself. So I just put together a few pictures uh, which are to do with the book, which were the inspiration. I have to admit I couldn't find any pictures of the family eating ice cream because the family always ate ice cream with so much love and fervor that we didn't take any pictures but <laughs> here are the pictures from the and i don't have any remote so this is the picture of the family being on the beach when the boy says we are busy and the ocean and uh, everything looks like an ice cream this is one of the sketches for the book which didn't make it to the book but it was one of the sentiments that you being from america you don't know what ice cream means to you because ice cream is one of the most wonderful things which connects people of uh, all the nationalities, all the colors and everything. And if you're from Europe, you do get ice cream, it's colorful ice cream, but it's always more like sitting in the cafe and being so sophisticated. And here you have these little like huts where like the whole families come like walruses and everybody has huge ice cream and it's sunset and everybody eats ice cream. So this is the camp of the children who are of all different culture backgrounds, which I didn't uh, put in the book in the end. The next picture would be, oh, this was a wonderful picture I discovered about the American army. This is the D-Day in Paris with uh, um, really people serving ice cream as sort of we came, we brought you peace. So that also didn't make it to the book. And the next picture is, uh, I have to say that because I don't have the remote, 
This is the store with a picture of President Obama in Japan with all kinds of color ice cream. And it was one of the main sentiments because I grew up in the country which is now hard to explain, the country which doesn't exist anymore and which was in the political system which doesn't exist anymore. It was called Czechoslovakia. I lived in communism and we, we had some ice cream, but it was mostly just uh, white ice cream because there were no colors. I guess it was hard to get colors for the ice cream. I know they can be artificial, but so we had like a little bit of white ice cream, a little bit of vanilla ice cream, and then we had Russian ice cream called Moroženoya, which is sort of exported ice cream, but Russian ice cream is like two wafers with like piece of uh, vanilla in the middle, and you have to wait for the perfect moment when you can bite it, because otherwise if you bite it too early, it sort of shoots out the middle piece. <laughs> and if it gets too, too soft, it, you can't eat it anymore because it spills all over you. So it was more genoia, but this is the Japanese ice cream. And this is the storyboard for the book, which uh, was more to talk about how the book comes to be. Uh, I have to say I'm grateful to the editor of the book, Tracy Mack and David Saylor, because I was also in this very tough situation working for 27 years with wonderful, wonderful, gracious, noble editor Francis Foster who passed away and I didn't know what will be next. So the ice cream, memory of the family, bright colors and a very cheerful editor, very, just perfect solution. Next picture would be, Oh, this was deciding how I would be using all these very bright and pastel colors. So this is the room of the boy who's obsessed with ice cream. I think now we can go through it pretty quickly. Uh, it's uh, different cities, I was thinking, made of ice cream, which was inspiration really of Saul Steinberg, who was my hero. This was, again, forest made of ice creams. You see, this is terrible for the children because they see the pictures of the ice creams, but I don't have somebody said, why don't you ask some ice cream truck to come over here and, and serve ice cream. <laughs> but they did it last week somewhere in Westchester and then people are interested in ice cream and not in the book. <laughs> so these were different ideas for the book of the ice cream truck of the street with ice creams. Uh, next one I think is um, really from Saul Steinberg, sort of American bicycle, but you couldn't really sit on that seat, so that's silly. This was children playing sports that made it to the book as a camp. And I think after that, it's me as a child holding fish because I didn't have a picture of me as a child holding um, ice cream. So it's the closest I could find. And after that, I think I have a picture listening to the world where the ice cream's not. Oh, no, that's silly. It's just a picture of me uh, being little. This is the family pictures either before we ate ice cream or after we ate ice cream. But it's more like remembering that these children were little and uh, didn't talk back. So we can go through this. They are now, he's in Virginia Tech and she's in Boston. So uh, they just look completely different. So this is the memories of the summers gone and uh, all the different colors. And I don't even remember, I think it was cherry vanilla and uh, mango for her. And now she's vegetarian anyway. So I don't know if she eats ice cream. I have to ask about that. This was probably, my wife put it together lovingly, all these pictures before and after ice cream. So um, there are no illustrations there. Uh, I think next one would be, yeah, that they're eating actually something, she wouldn't eat it now. But she already has faces like, like she does today. And um, the book uh, was about the memory of all this ha happening, of all the uh, colors and all the uh, moments we lived together. What was interesting, I don't know if it's the next picture that um, I'm eating pizza. It's completely wrong. That should be like a different book. I'm sorry about that. So uh, that's, uh, that was a big ex inspiration because he wrote a poem when I thought he's a genius in like fourth grade when he mentions the mountains made of ice cream. I know now it wasn't such a good poem. I'm cannot judge American literature that well, but <laughs> I definitely used the idea for the last picture of the book of the mountains made of ice cream. And what was amazing about, uh, these are children really eating ice cream, but they are children of editor Tracy Meg, who are very funny and uh, cheerful children. So I, just to have some ice cream and put it in. <laughs> and wanted to point out that one picture of the book became very influential and very meaningful for this summer because I did a picture without knowing 
what this summer happens of the summer camp when the submarine, which is really like a mango ice cream, comes to Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty holds ice cream and mango uh, submarine really is like a yellow submarine. And I, of course, grew up with yellow submarine and I wasn't supposed to listen to yellow submarine when I was young and then I uh, knew everything about the yellow submarine and all of a sudden I was asked to create this poster for the subway in New York this summer uh, and it's a year when John Lennon would be 75 years so I this is the poster now if you come to New York on subway trains number I think six two four seven uh, what is annoying about this public art that if you stand on the subway, nobody's ever looking at your poster, but then they all say they know about it. But what was even more interesting that because of the poster, I was asked to design the tapestry, which was woven in, in Abusson, France, and was unveiled on the 29th of July on Ellis Island by Yoko Ono and Bono and Edge. Um, in Ellis Island's main hall where all the immigrants between 1895 and 1954 came. So all of a sudden the ice cream book got connected with John Lennon, Yellow Submarine and now Ellis Island. So I can again claim that I have much higher ambitions than just making little uh, pink books about ice cream, which it would seem. And uh, thank you very much for your attention and uh, see you again soon. Oh, and those, those are the little children you have seen before, so everything comes full circle. Uh, summer is over, but it's still hot, so if you see ice cream outside, please uh, have one on me. Thank you. <laughs> I was supposed to mention it's a great honor that two of my books are on the National Endowment for the humanities list. I just got this before I spoke and then I forgot to mention it. So I'm very proud and very grateful that two books are on this list. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.